something that we might be able to see play a role in this matchup, or is it going to be difficult? Let's find out. Our final round of Swiss here at the 2024 North America International Championships, and it is between Juan Salerno and Eric Rios, featured on the main stream. Incineroar and Golden Go here for Juan versus the Shadow Rider Calyrex and the Urshifu for Eric. Golden Go right off the bat. It's, it's great because you can terrestrialize away from that ghost weakness, but Eric immediately leading the Calyrex with the Urshifu is a really strong place to be in because you have the threat of that close combat. Incineroar obviously there to protect it from a close combat or a surging strikes with that fake out. But at the same time, the Urshifu on Eric's end might also be that ghost terror. Uh, no, it's grass, so we can always get faked out here. Don't have to worry about that just yet. It, it, I'd really like this lead from Eric, though, because we do talk about how Terra Normal Golden Go is kind of a nice Calyrex answer. But immediately, you know that you are not safe from this Urshifu starting off with that close combat threat. And either way, you can also just get some damage down into this Golden Go with something like the Surging Strikes, whether it yeah. is going to be in its, its classic standard Steel Ghost type or if it does terrestrialize over to the normal types. You're not really too worried about it either way. But the Fake Out is certainly one way to stop this Urshifu in its tracks for at least this first turn as the Shadow Ball heading in that Shadow Rider Calyrex direction. This Incineroar going to take it instead and it doesn't feel a thing. I like that play from both players. Incineroar swapping in here is really great for Eric because it's a nice defensive swap. Even if the Shadow Ball does not go into that slot, and let's say Golden Goat goes for something like a Nasty Plot, you have the threat of knockoff, which will remove its leftovers, cripple its recovery for the rest of the game, and still do a good chunk of damage. The faking out the Urshifu is also really nice. I think the, the, the Calyrex is heavily threatened on Eric's side, likely doesn't stay on the field, and one takes advantage of that. Moongus now coming back out in its place. We've got the uh, just full switch out <laughs> of Pokemon here. Actually, as we get a chance to see that the fourth and final here for Juan in this game number one is going to be this Raging Bolt. Nice way to put a pin down onto this Rapid Strike Urshifu. And this Amoongus is going to be the perfect Pokemon to take all of these Surging Strike hits. Take a look at how much recoil yeah. this Urshifu is taking from the Surging Strikes alone. It actually, I think, took more than it dished <laughs> out to this Amoongus. Surely. That's the, that's the scary part about Rocky Helmet if you're using this Rapid Strike Urshifu. It was kind of an innovation people used. When Urshifu started picking up in popularity is punishing it with that Rocky Helmet. Knockoff does go into the Raging Bolt though. Kind of a big deal for both of these players because that Assault Bust is now gone. The Raging Bolt has lost its special defense boost, which could come in very handy for this Calyrex on Eric's side of the field. I think at that point then, I don't know how much you care about preserving this Raging Bolt for later. Yes. Because you're hoping that this Golden Go will be able to deal with the Shadow Rider Calyrex matchup. So then how can Juan actually use this Raging Bolt to get to that type of end game? This Urshifu is within very reasonable thunderclap range. Like, it should go down. Also worth noting, there's no Ice Rider. We've seen all four of Juan's Pokemon. That's a great he, he, point. He took a page out of Eric's book, and there is no restricted <laughs> Pokemon here. So this a... is kind of like entirely a Golden Ghost centric game plan at this point, I would think. Absolutely. I mean, you still have the Raging Bolt that can that can help out here. I think even if you don't lock into Thunderclap, you always have a reasonable amount of spread damage with something like the um, the Electro Webs, or you just go for the Volt Switch here, which is also a really great way to make these pivots. This Incineroar coming in too will get a nice Intimidate drop down onto Eric's Incineroar. Helps out with that damage output just a little bit. Love that Bolt Switch because if Urshifu stays in, it will get KO'd by it. But of course, an Urshifu staring down a Raging Bolt and an Amoongus locked into Surging Strikes wants to be literally anywhere else. It, it just not, does not want to be in that position. So the switch out there means you capitalize with it, you get the Bolt Switch, you know what's coming in onto the field in place of that Urshifu, so you can switch something in else. And in this case, it's that Amoongus. Yeah. And you don't want to have to just use the Terra right away because right. it is Terra Grass. Yep. So it is one way to be able to deal with that Rage Powder on the Amoongus. But otherwise, yeah, that's not very fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Urshifu now, like, you know, you like seeing the Incineroar. And if you do opt to go for that Trestalization on this turn, Incineroar will be pretty heavily threatened by that Surging Strikes. You can bypass a potential Rage Powder to not get hit by the Rocky Helmet once again. If you Rage Powder into the Amoongus one more time, unless it gets knocked off, the Urshifu just gets knocked out. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's just going to be a really sad amount of damage with the Surging Strikes, too. Because this Amoongus, by the way, after the Regenerator healing, it's basically full. Yeah. Uh, like, I think it, it just didn't... <laughs> yeah, it's full, actually. <laughs> it is actually just full. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the, the ability really coming in clutch there. Your super did negative damage with that Surging Strikes, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's how that math works out. But the Pollen Puff, 
covering for a grass Terra. True. Yep. That's really nice coverage. And also smart of Eric not to terrestrialize this turn, knowing that you're probably getting faked out and you're not going to get a whole lot out of it. You do risk a Spore coming in there, but I think a Spore, knowing that, I mean, if you're covering for a possible Terra Grass, you're not expecting a, a Spore to work anyway, so you may as well just pawn Tusk. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, even just to be able to get some damage down, like, what, let's say that Shadow Rider Calyrex switches into that spot. <laughs> Oh. True. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to feel good either. No. <laughs> so good coverage here. Now, though, the shoe is on the other foot as Eric has the opportunity to use this Incineroar to full effect. So Juan's going to make a pivot. It's going to be the Golden Go. A little risky, knowing that there is going to be uh, an Incineroar, the U-turn, though, not going to be super effective damage into that Golden Go. But you take a look at this Incineroar, knowing that it has both Flare Blitz and Knock Off, two moves that would be super effective into that Pokemon. That's the nice thing about running Flare Blitz is you do threaten a lot more offense from this Incineroar, especially specifically into Amoongus. Amoongus is a Pokemon that typically in, in the past did not like seeing. Oh. oh, that's a big play. Knock Off gets the leftovers off the Golden Go in a huge chunk of damage. Oh, the Pollen Puff. A really nice cover from Juan there. I yeah, like that a lot. Yeah, but, but so risky still. It is. Like it, it, it was risky, but... I don't know. I, I think if you're going to make that risk, covering it with the Pollen Puff is really smart. The now Timidity knockoff, was so important. It's true. It really was. <laughs> this one was important. Now that Knock Off has, has gotten rid of the leftovers, the base power of Knock Off is not getting that boost anymore. So if you, even if you do remain in this Ghost Steel form, you're going to be taking less damage from subsequent Knock Offs. Can't go for Rage Powder here, which is why the Golden Go is going to switch off the field in favor of this Incineroar because Eric's Incineroar is carrying those safety goggles. It would not be able to redirect away something like a super effective Flare Blitz into that slot. But it's time for Terrestrialization. Eric has saved it specifically for the Shadow Rider Calyrex. And we have seen, if you've watched the Los Angeles Regional Championships, just how much a Terra Fairy Draining Kiss can do to a Pokemon. And yeah, we're going to see it into this Incineroar. Might do a pretty good chunk of damage there. Yeah. That's like, respectable. What? I don't know. That's a good amount. Flare Blitz does come out so into the Incineroar much. as well. Coverage for Golden Ghost staying in and Draining Kiss barely missing the KO. But a really nice Incineroar swap from Juan here. And now Amoongus on Eric's side, or rather on Juan's side, will put Eric's Shadow Rider Calyrex to sleep. And because that Incineroar swapped in, you're really not too worried about a Flare Blitz anymore into that Amoongus slot. Would have done a decent amount, but certainly not KO'd it. And now the Calyrex is asleep. The Terrestrialization has been used. So importantly, the Urshifu will no longer have the chance to be immune to those Rage Fighters or Spores. Yeah, it's a, that, it is a lot to have to deal with. I think you're also taking a look at just kind of how to navigate through these next couple of turns. It is tough, right? Like, like how, the, do you, how do you stall out the sleep if you're Eric? It's difficult. The Incineroar on one side, like, you, you can parting shot out, you can get some Calm Mind boosts, like, preemptively negated, essentially. But there's not a whole lot of damage being threatened because the Golden Go on one side is still pretty vulnerable to something like switching into a knockoff. And, in, and even if you want to, like, switch it in this turn, you are kind of relying on a more than a one turn sleep out of this Calyrex if you want the Golden Go to attack. Tough pivot options here, but this Urshifu is going to be what takes that Incineroar's place. The parting shot, though, able to land into the Calyrex one way to be able to deal with this Covert Cloak. Just drop the special attack a little bit, get this Incineroar out of there, and hope that, yeah, you're going to get those sleep turns if it is going to be the Golden Go that comes back in, and it is. It is Golden Go on the field once again. No leftover, so it doesn't get any passive recovery, but Fallen Puff brings it all the way back up to full HP. And again, this Urshifu cannot terrestrialize into a grass type. It cannot bypass any redirection from this Amoongus. So if it wants to attack and do any kind of damage, it will have to risk taking Rocky Helmet chip damage once again. And it looks like maybe two more Rocky Helmet hits will knock it out, which is a really tough place to be in for this Urshifu. Ooh, this could be a big play. Much like how Eric was able to call the Golden Go switch in, get the knockoff for super effective damage into the Golden Go, also take away its healing potential with something like the leftovers. Kind of hoping that you're going to call that there's no Rage Powder and there is a Terra on this Golden Go as the Shadow Rider Calyrex goes back into its Pokeball. It takes its mandatory turn of sleep, so maybe it has a chance to wake up whenever it decides to pop back out. But the Intimidate for now and the Rage Powder, there is no Terra from this Golden Go just yet as we see the close combat have to land into the Samungus. Not very effective damage, and also you're dropping your own defense stats. 
and getting that Rocky yeah. on the recoil. Any kind of attack left will be able to KO this Urshifu. And not to mention that the Raging Bolt is still in the back for one. The Thunderclap is an option to KO it before it can attack, but most importantly, plus two special attack on this Golden Go now. The Incineroar is still alive and well, ready to do some disrupting, but you obviously cannot fake out the Ghost type. And now that Urshifu is locked into a close combat as well, you don't even need to Rage Powder anymore because you would love for the Urshifu to go for the Fighting type move into the Ghost type, right? So for nothing sure. switching in really wants to take a possible plus two make it rain. You might just have to sacrifice the Urshifu, but no, switching it out instead. Going to switch it out, and I think like you still have to think about what you're going to end up doing with this Golden Go, though, because since you can't Rage Powder away this Incineroar either, like, you kind of have to consider, okay, well, I don't know if I want to stay as a Steel-type Golden Go. But this Intimidate could very much help with that. We've seen how much damage this Incineroar actually does when it comes down to actually dealing a Flare Blitz at minus one into this Golden Go, and that's meaningful amount of damage here without Make It Rain. So this Golden Go is going to survive. It does survive very well. It takes out Flare Blitz, and in conjunction with the Flare Blitz recoil into Eric's Incineroar, this might be enough for one more make it range to take two KOs for here. For sure. Especially in conjunction with the possible knockoff from Incineroar. And you're looking at the rest of the things on the back for Eric. Helix is a fairy type now. It will be taking super effective damage from Make It Rain. Could not possibly survive one at plus one. Maybe even not at neutral either. But you also have Fake Out here yeah. from the Incineroar. So you can't even actually. I don't think I don't think Inherit can actually stop a KO this turn. Right. I, I, I don't think it's possible, right? Because you have to fake out. Well, Mugus, for protect, I it guess, can protect, but... and you might want to just to preserve another few Pokemon. But like, it's it's really difficult here. Even if the Golden Go opts for, I don't. Maybe even another Nasty Plot. Could you see that? Like, fake out the Incineroar, go for oh, Nasty Plot. I could, Not this time, but though. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it, it just gonna play it safe. It's gonna be the Amoongus. It's uh, still full HP. Yeah. <laughs> Just regenerator coming in so clutch here. And it's actually going to be another pivot from the Incineroar on Eric's side as well. It sheds the Intimidate drop, but it is also going to stick around to hopefully provide maybe Fake Out if it's able to get right beside that Shadow Rider Calyrex. The Make It Rain, though, it's going to be a plus one Golden Go after it already got its special attack dropped in the previous turn, but now it's back down to neutral, taking a KO with it. But where the where this Amoongus is in terms of its HP, it's certainly not going to survive even a neutral make it rain. It's not. And that is a good use of the Urshifu, though. Like, the Urshifu is at very low health. Anytime it attacks this Amoongus, and again, it, it gets knocked out by the Aki Helmet. And now you can just use it to protect the Amoongus, swap an Urshifu, and eat the Make It Rain, which will force Golden Go back down to neutral special attack after that nasty plot in two Make It Rains. And Senroar in a good, pretty good spot here again. It might be able to survive one Make It Rain at neutral, thanks to it being a pretty bulky Pokemon, and of course, resisting Make It Rain with that fire typing. Importantly, too, it carrying those safety goggles, it cannot be redirected by Amoongus. So unless, unless Golden Go has a little bit more firepower than I might be expecting, I don't know if Incineroar gets knocked out on this turn. Ooh, it's going to be close. A lot of the times you see Golden Go have something like a metal coat, which has yeah. certainly given me rose-colored glasses when it comes down to how much damage a <laughs> Make It Rain can do from a Golden Go. But even if you're going to try to take another Flare Blitz, I mean, you got an Intimidate drop down, which feels nice. And it's uh -oh. finally time to let the Terrestrialization rip. This Golden Go is now going to become a normal type. So it should surely be able to survive the Flare Blitz. It, it might actually survive this Flare Blitz now with that Intimidate and the Terrestrialization. And importantly, is now immune to Astral Barrage. Amoongus is KO'd by Make It Rain, but Incineroar on Eric's end will survive with 11 HP. That means that if it does go for a Flare Blitz, it's just going to get knocked out to any recoil that it ends up doing. So let's see if this Flare Blitz can get the job oh. done. And no, this Terra, the perfect answer as it knocks itself out in response. It's all down to just this sleepy Shadow Rider Calyrex yeah. for Eric. While it is sitting at full HP, it's no longer a ghost type. You've got this Incineroar in. Just fake it out and make it rain. And the great part about this Amoongus being so healthy as well is if Amoongus is on the field next to Terra Normal Golden Go, the Calyrex Shadow Rider cannot possibly damage Golden Go. Astral Barrage is a spread type move, which does ignore the redirection, but obviously the normal type Golden Go is immune, and Amoongus can just redirect any possible draining kisses. That is the only way that Calyrex has to damage Golden Go. So a very well-preserved Amoongus here is going to be a fantastic late game 
for Juan. I think you're probably going to see a parting shot here. It's a great way to get Amoongus on the field safely and make sure that Goldengo can switch back in. Which and, and now this is this is fantastic positioning for Juan, who should be able to wrap up this first game. Amazing. Really, really uh, amazing, especially now that you're also going to be back at neutral for the Make It Rain. So it feels good. Yes. It feels good to like get that back and going and doing a great job there. And even just preserving it for later, actually. Wants to go for the Raging Bolt instead. Has access to just go for something like the Thunderclap, knowing that you're, you're still slow. Yeah, I mean, you are, you're a little bit slower, and the, the, you could possibly try and get some Electro Webs off, but I do believe the Cobra Cloak is still intact. I love this too, actually. Volt you're Switch just, comes through, yeah. Yeah, no, you go for the Volt Switch so that you can kind of hope it wakes up, I don't know. You hope it wakes up, but also, like, maybe you're worried about one Make It Rain not KOing, and so you, you get this Volt Switch off to get some chip damage in there, so now one more Make It Rain should be more than enough to do the trick. And I actually kind of love this too. You're going straight for Spore to try and catch the Calyrex waking up. Yep. I believe this... It might be the guaranteed wake up turn, or it might be one more uh, of a potential to stay asleep. But at the same time, you're just refusing to swap this Golden Go in until you know it's perfectly safe to go for that Maker Rain. Guaranteed wake up turn, you get faked out in speed. If Eric Rios can fight his way back into this best of three set, it is all for a spot in the top eight on the line. As we see Calyrex and Incineroar here for Eric, and for Juan, it is the same lead Amoongus and Incineroar. I really like this lead from Juan. It, it gives you so much flexibility. Amoongus immediately threatening Spores into Calyrex is nice. Incineroar immediately there to intimidate any possible physical attackers from Eric is great for the Amoongus. And now we also have kind of the option of one of those knockoff Spore plays coming out from Juan as well. That's something that you know, pretty much every Amoongus these days is running safety goggles except for the few assault vests that we've seen. If you have the potential to knock off those safety goggles, the Incineroar now, whose whole, kind of whole identity is ignoring Amoongus, can't. Exactly. Well, Calm Mind from the Shadow Rider Calyrex first. Good way to get the special attack engine up and running while also being able to increase that special defense in lieu of that Golden Go that could be waiting in the back. But that knockoff is going to remove those safety goggles from this Incineroar, and that is going to make this first turn pretty difficult. The safety goggles are gone, but the Calyrex is still pretty scared of this Incineroar. Not having Terastalized yet, it is very weak to the possibility of a knockoff coming through. And we've seen Eric's last two Pokemon. Neither of them are Amoongus. We have an Incineroar that is here to make the Calyrex's life a little bit more tricky without any kind of redirection. Well, plus one. This Astro Barrage is gonna hurt. Truly, yeah. Into the Amoongus and the Incineroar. It's not gonna be enough to get a knockout, but it is going to do a lot of damage into this Incineroar. A parting shot, though, to pivot something else in. But but what? This Shadow Rider Calyrex is so fast. It is, and of course, the Incineroar on Eric's side, even at minus two, might have the firepower to KO Amoongus after that Astro Barrage, because again, it is running Flare Blitz. It's not a move we've been seeing super often on Incineroar, and it might be coming in very handy. Yeah, I mean, it's not at least not going to be the Golden Go that has to take that, but with this Amoongus, oh, that critical hit, hit ah. I don't, I don't know if it matters. matters. I don't gonna, think that matters I'm at gonna all. I'm going to say it didn't. You know, minus two attack is significant, but the super effective Flare Blitz, very high base power. I think that's probably enough to KO it. And a really smart turn from Eric there. That's like the only way left really you have of guaranteeing nothing goes to sleep is that huge Astral Barrage and Flare Blitz. And Tamidate is going to drop it again though. So at minus three, at least this Golden Go is going to be pretty safe. But Eric has to play this mind game. Do you want to go for the Astral Barrage, which is going to do uh, you know, decent damage into the Incineroar, or are you ready to run the risk of hitting into a normal type Golden Go? It is rough. The Golden Go, I think, almost has the Terra Normal here. The plus one Astral Barrage, surely enough to KO it in one hit. And because the Calyrex is still the Ghost type, a fake out into that slot is very, very risky. I believe we did see Eric select the terrestrialization there, give him a nice way to resist a possible knockoff. But let's say one tried to call that, you could be very far behind. Well, the terrestrialization means that this is going to be a fairly vulnerable Shadow Rider Calyrex with the fairy type of Make It Rain. Could be huge, but because of how fast this Calyrex has been, you will know that you could get this Calm Mind boost up as long as you don't get faked out here. So it is just going to be the Calm Mind. So plus two special attack, plus two special defense for this Calyrex as it's time for Juan to go on the offensive. It's the Golden Goal that just goes oh. for a Shadow Ball, though, into this Iron Hands. And like with the Assault Vest, it's going to do very little. 
in the parting shot straight into that slot too. I think Wom was trying to catch that Calyrex going for a protect, not wanting to take a possible shadow ball or knockoff or even make it rain. But Eric capitalizing so well. Now that Amoongus is gone, there's really nothing that can slow down this Calyrex. Raging Bolt comes through and it does have the Assault Vest, but at plus two special attack and with access to that same type attack bonus draining kiss, Raging Bolt is really no more comfortable into this Calyrex than it ever was, especially given that it doesn't have, you know, a Snarl that, could, even without the Covert Cloak, could possibly lower its special <laughs> attack, but entirely not an option here. No. At least the Assault Vest is intact, though, True. for this game. So it'll help with this Calyrex a little bit. Maybe. It'll try its best. <laughs> uh, you're still stalling out for just a bit. As a, the, oh, okay, the Iron, Tan, the Iron Dance tried here, right? Like a really good effort to try to call that this Terra Normal might come through. So either you get the hit into the fake out or you're gonna get the hit into this protect. That's a, that's a really smart cover there. If the Golden Go does want to terrestrialize and attack the immune to that uh, Astral Barrage, then you, you get the fake out there and it doesn't attack at all. If it doesn't protect and it doesn't terrestrialize, then it just gets knocked out by Astral Barrage. So really smart play there. Volt Switch does come through, try to reposition some of Wan's Pokemon. So that means that the Incineroar does hit the field and will be able to resist Astral Barrages, but it's still a plus two special attack. Like, nothing yeah. really resists at that point. I mean, it's it's so difficult for Juan at this point. After losing the Amoongus, you've lost your redirection. It's so difficult to actually weave in a nasty plot, which was critical for Juan's success in that first game. Yes. <laughs> it's tough. Astral Barrage does come through here. Big damage coming out from this Calyrex Shadow Rider, yeah. enough to just one hit KO that Golden Go. Do a big chunk of damage to Incineroar at the same time. And at this point, it feels like Eric is just way too far ahead. Yeah, I mean, it, it all started off with that first Calm Mind that Eric was able to get on the very first turn of this game. Yeah. Even though you're able to lower this Urshifu's attack stat, it's just really not going to be enough in this game, it feels like, because the Raging Bull gets to come in but it will get knocked out to a second Astral Barrage, especially because the Shadow Rider Calyrex just got a boost from Grimnay after knocking out that Golden Go. The Covert Cloak also coming in really handy here. After it Trustlies away from a Ghost type, it becomes vulnerable to fake out the normal type move, but Covert Cloak will block the flinching effect from Very fake true. out. Very true. So you can't even like reposition to like switch in Cinderor and get Golden Go on the field to try and fake it out, get a nasty putter, make it rain off, and so there's just not a whole lot you can do if you're one now. This this Raging Bolt, without much HP left, and with the extra special attack boost from Grim Nay, Astral Barrage could just end the game right here. Yeah, I mean, even if you Thunderclap into that slot, it's just not going to be enough. And Wan actually calls it into the Urshifu instead. As it switches out, it's not able to hit. This Astral Barrage will seal the deal for the second game. And we're tied one apiece in this best of three. Eric played this game so well. Between two previous international championships gets to conclude now with one leading the Incineroar and the Amoongus. And Eric is switching it up. It's the Urshifu and the Shadow Rider Calyrex. Juan still banking his tournament life on this Incineroar Amoongus lead. It is pretty flexible, and now that the Incineroar has not been led from Eric, you do have the chance to try and put something to sleep on this turn. We're seeing the immediate Grass Terrace consideration from Eric, though. If that goes through and Incineroar is knocked out by Surging Strikes right off the bat, that could be disastrous for Juan. Gotta consider that Eric wants to play aggressive. Yeah. And that would certainly be an aggressive play to have to make. <laughs> it's really cool, though, that Eric has these options where, you know, we've seen a very defensive game from Eric in that game yesterday on stream without the Calyrex, just grinding it out with the Amoongus, with the two fighting types. But we do have the option for some very aggressive plays as well. This one, I would say, is much more on the safer end, which I think this late in the tournament with this so much on the line makes a lot more sense. But. We have the options there. We, we have the gas pedal. Yeah, but if, like, if you risk it, you lose. Yes, I think it's true. Yeah, yeah. it's really <laughs> what that type of play comes down to. And you just don't want to do that. So a fake out from the Incineroar as the Spore attempted to go that way as well. So, uh, you know, at least you would have stopped it with the fake out, right? If right. it had terrestrialized, the grass here, though, would have stopped the Spore. You have to wonder if one is considering like a knockoff into the Calyrex, right? Like it is double weak to it. You would be getting a lot of damage into that slot. And of course, with the Intimidate, might not be able to take the one hit KO, but it is still a big deal. Amoogus going for Protect here does not want to get faked out and take possibly an Astral Barrage on this turn. And Incineroar on Eric's end does go for that fake out. 
All right, so it's gonna be a pretty uh, moot turn right now, except for the fact that Eric kind of comes out on top with this one. The Shadow Rider Calyrex able to get this Calm Mind, and this is where things started to go wrong in that game There's number two, the but the knockoff, oh! it's so close to being a one-hit knockoff, oh but it's not, it's just one HP. That oh. wasn't a Covert Cloak, that was a Focus Slash. <laughs> Truly, the invisible Focus Slash there for the Calyrex, and even with a Calm Mind Boost, that is a big, big bit of damage there. Anything now with a single bit of damage can knock out this Calyrex, and that is such a huge source of offense for Eric's Calyrex that it, it's, like we talked about, you, you, that was a kind of a big risk. You're facing a Dark-type attack that you can't mitigate damage from with Calm Mind because it's physical, and you took that risk knowing it paid off last game, but just not this time, one calls it. I can't believe it, <laughs> but the Shadow Rider Calyrex is still up and it's still kicking because even with one HP, it still has a dream. And this Astral Barrage is its last bastion of hope to get some damage down onto Wan's team before it's finished off with another knockoff. Big play here. It does open up the door for Eric to go for the Terra on something else. It and with does. the Flare Blitz as well to finish off the Samungus. Especially We're considering down one, apiece. one apiece, and now the Urshifu on Eric's end in a much better position. Amoongus is really, really annoying for Urshifu, even if it does opt to terrestrialize into a grass type, because you eventually have to target the Amoongus with some damage, right? And that Rocky Helmet is really difficult to deal with. I like that, that Eric opted to go straight for the KO onto that Amoongus with the Astral Barrage, with the Flare Blitz, trying to make sure that Urshifu is much safer to use, and even the Iron Hands. Iron Hands and Urshifu can't both terrestrialize. I think Iron Hands is a water type anyway. So with the Amoongus, on the field, Iron Hands is very difficult to use, but now it has so much more space. It loves Drain Punch against Cinderoars. It loves faking out Raging Bolts. It has options here. Now that Amoongus is gone, big deal for both players. Raging Bolt, though, would be the perfect answer to an Urshifu. True. You would love to be able to get this Raging Bolt in front of that Pokemon, especially when it has a Choice Scarf. Yeah. You know it's going to be attacking every single time it stays on the field. But like you said, it still can terrestrialize, Rose. It has the option to turn into a grass type, which would be great defensively into this Raging Bolt, especially because Wands Incineroar is not one that's packing Flare Blitz. You do not risk taking a super effective Flare Blitz after you terrestrialize. Well, Fake Out from this Iron Hands is going to kick off this first turn. And we're going to see the parting shot as well. So. Realistically, the only thing that can come out in its place is going to be one's fourth and final Pokemon in this third game, and it is going to be Golden Go, the reliable Pokemon for one in this entire series. But is it going to have to get attacked? No. You are so happy to see that, <laughs> yes. that it's just going to be the special attack drop into the Raging Bull instead and not an attack heading in its direction. A little bit of a risky play there from one. If you possibly take a knockoff or a Flare Blitz into that slot on that turn, that could set you back pretty badly. But Golden Go, in this battle, the remaining Pokemon on the field for Eric, these are the two it would want to be up against. You don't want to see that Incineroar. You have a hard time damaging it. It does have two super effective moves into you. But Urshifu and Iron Hands, two things Golden Go can reasonably be in front of without risking too much damage being taken and you're just going to double up into that slot. You can't protect in front of this Urshifu because the Unseen Fist would just allow this Urshifu to bypass something like that. And you also don't really want to run the risk either of just uh, take, hitting a fighting move into a ghost type. But there is a terrestrialization. It is going to be the Urshifu taking on the Tear Grass, a great defensive typing to have in the final moments of this third game. It is a nice defensive typing, but what you do give up is the resistance to make it rain. And later on in this game, if this Golden Go is somehow able to squeak out something like a nasty plot, that could be a detriment here. But a Surging Strikes into Golden Go on Wands end, probably not going to allow that to happen. No, I mean, Golden Go can be so bulky sometimes. So at the very least, you know that there's no Mystic Water to amp up that damage, and also you're just gonna have that natural bulk with the Shadow oh. Ball. It's gonna bring it to about half, but the Ooh. Draco Meteor is going to connect as well, so a big threat out of the way, and that Terra is gone. Love the choice of the Draco Meteor there. It means that if Urshifu swaps out into Incineroar, it will still take a big chunk of damage. You're not risking an Electric-type attack getting whiffed into that Grass-type Urshifu as well. While 
charge will come out, and thanks to the Intimidate wow. and Parting Shot, Golden Ghost sticks around. It's going to be the fastest thing on the field now that Urshifu has been knocked out. Yeah, and it can't get picked out either because it's still a Ghost type. Right. Really big turn for Juan there. The Golden Ghost hanging on puts him at such an advantage. He has three Pokemon left to Eric's two. You have your Incineroar. You have your Golden Ghost. You have your Raging Bolt. Golden Ghost has leftovers. It can protect. Get that recovery back because Unseen Fist is gone. Importantly, too, your Raging Bolt now is a minus three special attack, but you can switch it out. Not losing Golden Go means you still have a third Pokemon in the back that can replace this Raging Bolt and reset that special attack. And it's in the it's the Incineroar. So the yeah. Intimidate would be great into both of these physical attackers, but it's going to stay oh. on the field. It's just going to Terra. It has the Electric Terra type to try to weave away from some of these special attack drops that it just got from that Draco Meteor. And this Protect as well is going to help out this Golden Go with that HP recovery at the end of the turn. Oh, this but is actually cool. But that's one way to boost up that damage is that Bolt Switch into the Incineroar. So it gets to do just a little bit more, even though it is at that minus three. And then you get this free pivot into the Incineroar to get those Intimidate drops. I actually really love that Terrestrialization. You really don't want it on the Golden Go anymore. It's such low HP. You kind of want to remain a Ghost type, so you're How not getting faked out. How does the Iron touch it? Exactly. Even uh, you're taking so much damage now, and you're at such low attack. I think at least minus three from two Intimidates and a Parting Shot. That you're, and you have to force it to, to Wild Charge. <laughs> Drain Punch there, nice cover. You know, your best damage option into that Raging Bolt, and of course the Incineroar coming in. But now Golden Go has the Fake Out next to it. You have the space to go for another big attack, something like that Shadow Ball. And of course, the Raging Bolt in the back now has the Electric-type Terra to boost the damage of all its Electric-type attacks. That Bolt Switch damage, like from the, the Trasalization, not insignificant at all. That actually might be a little bit of a difference maker down the line, because you're only hitting it with resisted attacks otherwise. But I actually kind of wonder if Wild Charge would actually be enough to knock out the Golden Go in this state. It might be very close. It, it, I want to say it's minus say it's three, roll, right? But yeah, so, so I think this Golden Go it doesn't really want to stick around right now because it's still getting threatened by a knockout. And this Raging Bolt is quite healthy. Now that it's shed all of those special attack drops and you land this fake out into the Iron Hands, you've given yourself so much space. And a free switch now as this Incineroar gets knocked out. And the Raging Bolt kind of comes in scot-free. Doesn't it does. take any damage. I like that switch too as well. You have to imagine if the Iron Hands is attacking that turn, it's going to be well charging that slot. If one possibly opted to fake out the other slot, it's a really nice way to cover that switch there. Golden Goat does come back in. It is at neutral special attack, as is the Raging Bolt. And we are down to the final four Pokemon of this third game in the last round of Swiss. The winner can possibly move on to top eight, and the loser's tournament is over. It's going to be a Shadow Ball into the Iron Hands. It's just not that much damage at all. And it's going to be this Bolt Switch from the Raging Bolt to oh. finish off this Incineroar. So you got to hope that all the Intimidate Trops that you've gotten, all the parting shots under this Iron Hands, are going to be enough as the Wild Charge into the oh, Golden Goal is going to knock it out. But still, it's a Raging Bolt versus Iron Hands 1v1 in the final game of this set. You have to imagine that Draco Meteor is the only option left for this Raging Bolt to hit this Iron Hands with neutral damage. Any kind of electric it's attack will be resisted. It's hits connecting. one Draco Meteor. Oh, it's a critical hit! That's no massive! Way. Without that critical hit, maybe a second Draco Meteor with the Drain Punch recovery might not KO, but that is huge for one. Wow, even the Drain Punch, all of those Intimidate drops paying off, so it's just a little bit of chip damage here or there. Eric needs a miss, and it's not going to. The Draco Meteor into the Iron Hands is plenty, and Juan seals the deal 2-1 in this final round of Swiss. What a fantastic set between these two players. So back and forth. Two players at the top of their regions, Latam versus 